Recently, we made a video on validating ring circuit test results with tips on what you should know for electrical assessments. This video follows on from that and looks at earth fault loop impedance testing, ZE, PFC and more. We keep to very simple drawings and explanations and concentrate on what you should know before any assessment. And we will give you some tips on what the assessor might ask, the sort of things that I used to ask. All electrical training courses will include end of course exams and or assessments that test your abilities and understanding of the course that you are completing. In this video, we look at loop impedance or ZE, what is it and why is it important. We can't do this without understanding the three common types of earthing systems, why are they different and how to test them. And then move on and ask, what is prospective fault current and prospective short circuit current and where are they measured in the circuit? We should remind ourselves of what is involved in an installation. Looking at the outside world first, we will use a TNS system. TNS stands for Earth and Neutral Separate throughout the system. And you can see here that the neutral and earth conductors are joined at the supply transformer, but once they leave the transformer, they are separate throughout the installation. They never become joined again. At the top of the supply transformer is the supply line to the property that passes through the cutout fuse for the installation and the company electric meter. Compare this to a TNCS system where the cable from the transformer to the building has the earth and neutral combined together. And at the intake position, just before the consumer unit, they are separated into two individual conductors, earth and neutral. We call this system TNCS, earth and neutral combined and then separated. From the consumer unit, the systems are the same. If the main switch is closed, current can flow through the circuit breakers, MCBs, RCBOs, etc. and along the line to the load. This can be a kettle, a wall heater, the TV or whatever through the load and back along the neutral to return to the supply transformer. During an earth fault, current will flow along the earth conductor. The earth conductor is called CPC or circuit protective conductor inside the property and earth outside the property. The internal cables in the installation, the circuit wiring, are known as little r1 and little r2, which together make up big R1 plus big R2, which we use in the ZS calculations. How we do this testing is part of another video. And this is a basic TT system. T for Terra or Earth. TT stands for Terra Terra or Earth Rod T to Earth Rod T, with the electrical connection between the two being made through the soil. There is no copper connection between the earth at the supply transformer and the earth at the property and this has a big impact on our test results. If we look now at ZE and PFC measurements we will see that ZE or earth fault loop impedance to give it its full name and prospective fault current are two corners of the same Ohm's law triangle. We call it impedance and not resistance because ZE is measured on a live AC system. Taking ZE first, if we think of the installation drawings from the first few slides, this drawing shows just the part that are tested for ZE to make it easier to understand. We are only measuring this part of the circuit, ZE, external to the installation, the outside of the building. We are measuring along the earth conductor, through the supply transformer and back to the main switch. The question that we want answering asks, is there a continuous path from the earth in the consumer unit all the way to the supply transformer and back to the main switch and what is that impedance measurement? Why must the current path come back to the main switch, you ask? Because without the current returning to the consumer unit and passing through the fuses, how are the fuses or circuit breakers ever going to blow and shut off the supply? 
The ZE test is a live test and you must show that you can work safely and isolate relevant parts of the circuit. With the main switch open and the main earth removed to avoid parallel paths, we can test between the removed earth, the neutral and the incoming live side of the main switch. This is a three wire test and many meters do it this way. They use all three test leads. The actual test is between the line and earth, but the test meter needs the neutral connection before it will start the test. A number will be returned after a few seconds and this should be recorded. The assessor may ask you what this means. In this example here, the impedance of the earth fault loop path out of the building and back again is 0 0.18 ohms and should be recorded as ZE. This is the only ZE for this installation. For a TNCS system as shown, ideally this should not exceed 0 0.35 ohms. Some test meters can test using only two wires. They do not need the neutral test lead to be connected. And in theory, we should get the same reading for ZE. Whichever meter type you have, ensure that you know how to use it before your assessment day. Practice, practice and practice some more. The time to learn how to do the tests is now, not when you are stood in front of the assessor. With a TNS system, the testing is exactly the same. Whether you use a two-wire test or a three-wire test is between you and your meter. For TNS systems, we are looking for a ZE that does not exceed 0 0.8 ohms. The type of cable used in TNS systems is different to TNCS. It is older technology and has a slightly higher resistance reading. For TT systems, there is no copper earth connection between the installation and the supply transformer. We rely on an earth rod at each end and the conductivity of the soil to allow the fault current to flow out of the installation earth rod. What flows out is replaced by electrons flowing in at the transformer earth rod. This does mean that ZE is very much affected by the conductivity of the soil and the distance to the supply transformer. The readings shown here would have been typical for my house out in the wilds of Shropshire in the winter, but a long hot summer would see the impedance rise as the soil dried out. Ideally, we are looking for readings below 200 ohms, but this can be extended to 1,667 ohms if the appropriate RCDs are installed. We can look at PFC next, the amps, and as mentioned earlier, ZE and PFC occupy opposite corners of the Ohm's Law Triangle. PFC is a current and ZE is an impedance, an AC resistance. If we know ZE and the voltage, we can work out PFC. If we know PFC and the voltage, we can calculate ZE. Fortunately for us, our meters do all this for us. But always remember that ZE and PFC are like the two ends of a seesaw. If ZE increases, PFC decreases. If ZE decreases, PFC increases. And please note that ZE must change before PFC changes. PFC, the size of the fault current, is a result of the impedance of ZE and the voltage. We can never change the ZE by changing the PFC. It does not work that way. ZE must change before the fault current changes. So, a three-wire test on a TNCS system might return 1.33 kiloamps. Kilo, thousands of amps, and 1.33 kiloamps is the same as 1,330 amps. Most meters will display results in kiloamps. And again, the test can be as a three-wire test or a two-wire test. Some meters will display ZE and PFC on the same screen as shown here. So one test will do the ZE and PFC at the same time. It's a useful feature, but it's not essential. The same PFC test method is applied for TNS systems, 
two wire or three wire. Shown here, the meter is displaying 0 0.96 kiloamps or 960 amps. Get used to working with zeros and decimal points in the test results. And now for a TT system. This time the reading is 0 0.003 kiloamps. Your assessor may well ask you to convert this reading of 0 0.003 kiloamps into amps and to comment on it. This is just 3 amps and can be explained because it is a TT system with a high ZE reading. The ZE is going to be 240 volts divided by 3 amps or about 80 ohms of resistance and this is about right for a TT system. We must cover the testing of PSCC as well. The full name is Prospective Short Circuit Current and is the current that we might expect if there was a short circuit between the line and neutral anywhere in the circuit. The worst case short circuit would be at the intake position, so this is where we measure PSCC. Anywhere else in the circuit will have more conductors, more resistance, and so the PSCC will be slightly lower. We want the worst possible case. If the worst case is OK, then all the other points of use are OK too. It's exactly the same test lead and meter setup as the PFC tests, nothing is different. The same settings of your test meter dials and positions of the test leads are used for PSCC. And the two wire test can be carried out if your meter does this. If your meter can only do three wire testing, it can be useful to have stackable test leads. The probes will plug into each other as shown, making testing much easier and less of a juggling act. Stackable probes can be expensive, but I find their ease of use outweighs the initial cost. No difference with TNCS systems. PSCC is measured in the same way, the same meter settings as PFC, and we have other videos that go into the actual testing in a lot more detail. As you would expect, the same settings are used for TT systems. But this is TT with a high impedance to earth. Then how come the PSCC reading looks normal, about the same amps as the TNCS and TNS systems? Why was PFC just 3 amps and now PSCC is 1190 amps? This is because the neutral is a copper cable all the way back to the transformer. It is not relying on an earth connection. It is not using the soil. So we should expect readings anywhere from a few hundred amps up to one kiloamp or more. Why do we want to know what the short circuit current might be? Why do we measure PSCC? This is another favorite filling question in assessments. If we look on the front or side of a circuit breaker or RCBO, we will see a number in a box. Often 6,000 in domestics, but sometimes you will see 10,000. This is the braking capacity of the device in amps. What amount of current can the device brake safely? A 6,000 device can interrupt a flow of current up to 6,000 amps during a short circuit or a fault. Most domestic devices will be the 6,000 type. Industrially, you will come across 10,000 amp devices and even domestically, where the transformer is quite literally at the end of the garden. Let's not forget ZS, the earth fault loop impedance measured at the various points of use around the property. ZS is the earth fault loop impedance for the whole system, from the point of test to the supply transformer and back again. It is measured at the furthest point of each circuit and the results compared with the tables in the on-site guide. There are various test adapters that allow us to carry out ZS testing without dismantling the circuit. Shown here is a very useful socket test adapter. They are also available for lighting and other uses. There will be a different ZS for each circuit in the property and we have videos that cover ZS testing in great detail. And finally, a reminder 
of the different acronyms that we use and where they are measured. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.